and welcome to the Amrata Center. Um, this is wonderful. Thank you all very much for coming. Um, I, I first want to say that this evening would not be possible without the immense support of Dandelion Magazine, who is sponsoring the entire event. And, um, and there's two people in particular that were absolutely instrumental and uh, continue to be so to make this evening happen, or also what's happening in the next couple of days. And that's Kathleen Brown, who's the editor of Dandelion Magazine, and uh, she's been uh, all along in this process very much uh, doing many things with me to make this happen. And um, also I'd like to point out Sarah Ivany, who's the managing editor of Free Handbooks, who is very helpful with, um, especially with, for the advertising and um, made that wonderful card and poster that's been going around and uh, a whole bunch of other. And also, um, Care of Free Handbooks, we have uh, the lovely treats outside, the wine and the uh, lovely cheese. So, so I think actually, first of all, I want to applaud. <laughs> writing the Adwater Poetry Project in Montreal, um, I wanted to gather the three writers that we have tonight, Lynn Virginia and Carla Harriman, and Andrew Bess and Philip, together in one room to hear their work in counterpoints. And so, in some ways, this is a, actually an old dream of mine. Um, because I wanted to bring together three of, that I think are the most astute, engaged, fervent minds of our contemporary times. Um, the value and gift of the challenging work they create is immeasurable because their work doesn't nurture us into comfort, comforted and comfortable complacency, but instead faces us boldly, vulnerable, vigorous, dares us to think even when thought is at its most difficult. In the theater of poetry, Carla Harriman enters. A public gesture? Yes, but also one of displacement in that encounter with our many others. Does the state watch over? Does the din of globalization deafen? Carla Harriman turns to listen to Adorno's noise. Because there is a technology of listening, someone produces frequent moans. This is now and now and now, a present full of presence. And Carla Harriman multiplies, performs a polyvocal text, perhaps bilingually, perhaps inhabiting choral voices. At this juncture, might we improvise some music, like nonsense, the song united with everything. Because this is a literature of ideas, what just happened is a thought. There is baby. There is the open box. Yet, there never was a rose without a thorn. In the theater of poetry, Carla Harriman enters. Though there is no door to this haven of pedagogy, out is getting out and being out and being out getting out. But since when looking, there is doubling and doubling yet again. Carla Harriman travels the wide road with Lynn Virginia. She takes a seat over and over at the grand piano, plays amidst a cast of authors, including Lynn Virginia, Ron Silliman, Barrett Barton, and Ray Armitard. Through the emergence of language writing, art, politics, and culture of the San Francisco Bay Area in the mid-70s. Whose autobiography inhabits whose? Into the theater of poetry, Carla Harriman enters. We enter with her, responsive, listening, implicated. <laughs> 